Some people are insatiably curious. To the point, they cannot stop thinking about how the world works. They theorize and experiment. They build ridiculously complicated tools just to observe notoriously elusive phenomena. And they postulate and make predictions based on their observations. When observing large data sets or measurable instances of a particular phenomenon, patterns begin to emerge. When a pattern reveals itself, we can predict with a certain level of confidence a specific outcome will take place. As you might imagine, knowing the future can be quite valuable. Some patterns are so prevalent that they manifest in multiple unrelated domains or systems. A large number of molecules in a large social group of human beings, for example, have many common features. In particular, they are predictable due to the high number of their components despite their individual random character. The most common pattern apparent in data is referred to as a normal distribution. A normal distribution is a bell-shaped curve that results from a large data set of observations, whereby most observations occur around the average and a very small number of the instances take place far from the calculated average. More specifically, 95% of all observations should occur within two standard deviations of the mean. A normal distribution exposes itself in so many data sets, its frequency may itself follow a very tall normal distribution with a tiny deviation. Some real world examples that follow a normal distribution are human heights, pizza delivery times, standardized test scores, weight of fruit, distribution of blood pressure, and the probability distribution of the number of firing neurons, just to name a few. Even more interesting is the observation of an arrangement that doesn't follow a normal distribution. The Pareto or power law distribution fits nonlinear data of select physical systems while also being embedded in some social structures. In a power law distribution, a small number of instances are exponentially different than the majority of the population. The tail end of the distribution will have a dramatically disproportionate impact on the population, whereas a normal distribution would not. This is where the Pareto principle, also referred to as the 80-20 rule, was derived, which says that 80% of consequences are the result of 20% of causes. While this helps to understand the distribution, the Pareto principle is just a rule of thumb and not scientific. It could, be, it could have a ratio of 70-30, 90-10, or 95-5, etc. Because the power law distribution deals with exponents, many times the data will be presented in a logarithmic format that results in a straight diagonal line when viewing its graphical structure. Some examples of the power law distribution are oil reserves, size of corporations, word frequencies, and income slash wealth distribution. If human height followed a Pareto distribution instead of a normal distribution, approximately 60,000 people could be roughly 9 feet tall. And then another 10,000 people might be as tall as a male giraffe. And one person could even be as tall as the Empire State Building. Instead, most people do not deviate much from the average height of around 5 feet 7 inches, let alone reach the height of the Empire State Building. Where we would expect a normal distribution, but a Pareto probability distribution exists instead, has profound implications for behavioral outcomes. By better understanding large tail distributions that involve exponents, we could adapt adequate strategies to improve human flourishing, particularly in terms of income and wealth. We have known about this distribution for over a hundred years and its prevalence in society. And a man by the name of Karl Marx believed he could disintegrate this reality and build a utopia where wealth would be distributed equally. Instead, his vision created a dystopia that became known as communism, 
where wealth still aggregated in the hands of a few government elites. But in addition to that, overall poverty levels were much higher for the general population, and some governments sanctioned the systematic execution of certain segments of their own population. During this time, the Pareto distribution remained intact, and it continues to dominate. The fact that most wealth accumulates in the hands of a few might be a property that cannot be modified. The truth is, people and their circumstances are not equal, and some people have just the right configuration of biological and circumstantial factors that they're able to experience exponential financial growth. This concept doesn't just apply to individuals, it applies to nation states. The integrity and structure of the political and economic institutions in the U.S. and a combination of many other chance events allowed the U.S. up to this point accumulate a large percentage of the world's wealth, clocking in around 30% of global wealth in 2018. One country out of 195 universally recognized countries owns 30% of all wealth. Meanwhile, you have countries like Venezuela who hyperinflate their currency and cause it to collapse, North Korea who completely submit their entire population, and Afghanistan who has a fanatical group called the Taliban running the government, unable to properly accumulate wealth to help their citizenry flourish. We may not be able to equally distribute resources. But capitalism paves the way for technological innovation, which in turn lifts the poorest among us to a life worth living. Our responsibility as a species is to work to make sure people have access to education, food, water, and shelter. This doesn't happen through control or coercion. It happens through freedom of choice. As a reminder, not all value a person adds to society is measured in monetary terms. Money can never capture love, friendship, and integrity.